Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Tort. So before starting this episode, I've done actually quite a few things. It doesn't look like much, but it's been mostly gathering resources and resource processing. So I made a ton of Kamenite blocks, like, or uh, Kamenite bricks rather. I extended these drying racks out really, really far and made a bunch of Kamenite because I'm going to need that to make what I need for the blast bricks. That is our goal for this episode, is to make a blast furnace and make some steel, and then make some tools. Yeah, those are my two goals. Steel and tools. So I've got all the Kamenite going. Um, I went mining and got a bunch more iron because I realized I would need it. And I also got two more bloomeries up and going so that I can process it all faster. I also realized that it seems like the fastest way to get iron in the aroma mining dimension is actually not to go down to the, the, uh, the Y level that has the best quality iron, but it's actually to go on the surface. I'm nervous, it's almost nighttime. Yeah, the surface of the Aroma Mining Dimension is completely flat. Well, except for, you know, some, like, dips where there's pools and stuff like that, but for the most part, it's flat, so you can pretty much just run straight. There's, uh, it's always sunny. There's no enemies. Now, a lot of what you find on the top is the banded iron formations that give you... Well, it's, uh, this, this stuff, 100 millibuckets of molten bloom, so it takes five of those to melt to produce one ingot. So those are pretty crap. I don't even think they're worth getting, and I don't think I'll get them in the future. But one of the things you pretty commonly find, especially when you find an opening on the surface, it seems like an opening on the surface often leads down to this sort of, like, boggy layer of materials that can give you bog iron, which is 300 millibuckets per each one. It's pretty common, it's pretty easy to find, it occurs in pretty big uh, veins, and the 300 millibuckets, it's absolutely worth it to get it. I got almost two stacks of that stuff looking around, and I think that's the fastest way to get iron, actually. Run around the surface, looks for, look for holes, run in the holes, and just look for a bog iron. Boing, boing, bloop. So we should have enough steel to not only make the blast furnace, it is incredibly expensive in terms of steel to, or iron to make the blast furnace, but also enough to actually put in it, because after we make the blast furnace, there's no real point in making it if I can't actually process iron into steel, so I need some extra iron to process in it. So let's do it. Uh, one of the things I'm going to need is a bunch of redstone circuits, which I can then process into tiny plates. I'm not sure how many of these I need. I'll just make two stacks for now. We're also going to need 28 Kamenite bricks, which is just a bunch of Kamenite, or... Wait, what? <laughs> I thought I was misspeaking, but no, these actually do have the same name. Kamenite bricks? Kamenite? Oh, Kamenite brick! Singular. Bricks. Brick. Or as the item name is called, this is Brick Kamenite, and this is Kamenite Brick. <clears throat> anyway, we need 28 of these. Which also required some seared stone, so I had to make a bunch more of that. We are going to need almost two stacks of iron plates. Boop. Yeah, so that broke the engineer's hammer like I thought, so I made another one. Make some more. I don't think I quite need a whole another stack. Uh, I don't know, that should be enough. Engineer's hammer disappeared for a second, and then it came back to me. So I think that's almost everything. No, that is literally everything. These are non-conductive. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 what? I made tiny plates. I need non-conductive tiny plates? Uh-oh. Tiny plates and obsidian! <gasps> oh, I missed this. One obsidian to make eight. Four makes one. I'm gonna need quite a bit of that. Hmm. Okay, I could make a diamond pickaxe, because my other one broke. And I could go mine obsidian, but it might actually be faster to make obsidian. In this thing. So we can do that by... Uh, let me make another casting basin. Is this all the seared brick I have? Yeah, alright. I can only make one more casting basin. So at least we can process two blocks at the same time. 
So if you mix water and lava inside of one of these things, you could make obsidian. So let's do that. Oh, I forgot to mention, by the way, something really, really important that I discovered. So I've been having a lot of issues with coal because I keep having to use it up on all these machines. Well, guess what? It turns out you can use lava as fuel for almost all of these machines. For the bloomeries, absolutely. And it lasts for a long time. You can even put it inside of a furnace. And it burns for, I don't know, like five minutes or something. Unfortunately, though, you can't put it in the generator. I knew from past experience that you can put this in a sterling generator from the Ender IO mod, but I didn't think you could actually put it in vanilla furnaces or other stuff like the Bloomery. I just didn't even think about it. But I guess that's a thing. And it's super helpful because it's really easy to get just, you know, a couple tanks of lava and just occasionally throw a bucket of this in and it'll process for a long time. So much more efficient. Right, I don't have the water, but I do have the lava. Um, actually, let me just fill it up a little bit. So one kind of tricky thing is, how do I get this lava inside of this melt tree? I mean, I could put it inside of the tank, but this tank is to melt stuff. I need it in here. You can put the bucket in there. Yeah, that can't be molten. You can't, like, pour it inside or something. I don't even know what that would do. Probably nothing. So how do I get this liquid in there? Well, if I remember right, you need to do it using a drain, I think. And I'm pretty sure I have to flip the drain around. No, you don't. Okay. Cool. So yeah, you just put it into a drain. I thought you maybe had to flip the drain around because the drains do have sides. They sort of have outputs and inputs, but uh, I guess it doesn't care. Cool. Well, I'm going to get some more lava in there and some water and I'll make some obsidian. Right, so it turns out the making obsidian in the tanker smeltery by mixing water and lava thing, that's configurable. And the mod pack, had, because it's an expert pack, has of course turned that off, so now I've just got a bunch of water and lava sitting in there doing nothing. I just had a thought, can you just like, can I just pour water out into a, a block? Can I make a block of water? Ah, oh, you can't. Can you make a block of lava? Oh no. Nope. So I, I would just have to suck that stuff out. I can't cast it, really. Cool. That smeltery is still full of junk. Anyway, so since that doesn't work, and I really, really don't want to do the. Oh, I'm out of space. Well, while I'm doing that, let's do that. I have just enough copper to make another one. What the hell do I have so much of? Oh, I've got some garbage. Some, like, just a little bit of granite and crap. Some compressed cobblestone. Okay, that should be fine. Sort that. All right. So that doesn't work, but I think I can do something clever. I was looking at the recipes for obsidian. And I see there's one here where you can use buckets. Two buckets of water plus two buckets of... Lava equals one piece of obsidian. That's surprisingly expensive, but I was trying to think of a fast way to do that, right? I don't want to have to individually fill up four buckets to make one piece of obsidian and then repeat that 20 times. So I looked up the recipe for something that I was thinking of making. Back when I made that tank that I filled up with... Uh, the These tanks that I filled up with creosote oil and tried to craft with them, I thought those were the ones that I had saw that you could use in place of a bucket. So it's just like a bucket, but it just holds more, and you can use it in crafting recipes as a bucket. Well, it seems like you can, but it obviously doesn't work. But I think the thing that I was actually thinking about was the portable tank. I think you can use that as a bucket, and hopefully it's not broken. So I've made the stuff to make these, and I can fill them up, and each one can hold enough that if I fill both of these up, I should be able to make five pieces of obsidian. So let's do that. Got the thickened glass. It's just thickened glass and some copper. I needed a little bit more copper, which is why I made these blocks. There we go. Let's pray that this works. Gonna need four of these. Oh, they don't stack. Ah, that's alright. Um, can these be placed in the world? Yes. Okay, good. 
Oh my god, these are seriously hard to, to break. Um, these might be the sorts of things that you can use like a wrench on or something and it just breaks it automatically. No? Ah, whatever. Let's see if I can fill this up into the Ender IO tanks quickly. I could set them down and have the tanks just pump into them, I think, maybe? Yeah, I think I could do that. Um, but if it takes so long to break, I don't want to do that. Oh, okay, sweet, you can just right click and it just fills it up, cool. Mm. Hmm, that provides a slight problem. It filled it up all the way. I'm gonna have uneven amounts of lava. Hmm. Wait. Um. Something doesn't seem right? Did the stuff disappear out of these? This one's full. What? These are empty. Fill. 600. 6,000 millibuckets. Mo what? You move it and it just disappears. Everything, its contents disappear. What the fuck? What is up with tanks in this pack? They're so messed up. Well, at least if they're full, they seem to be okay. But does that mean they're gonna disappear when I go to craft with them, though? Well, I guess we're gonna go find out. Okay, let's pray that this works. Step one, at least the recipe works, so these do act exactly as buckets. Now, question number two, are they going to disappear when I craft it? Oh um. my... <laughs> why? Just, why? How does that even happen? Well, I got one piece of obsidian. How are you supposed to mass produce obsidian? You can't make it in the smeltery. You can't make it in that way, obviously. <sighs> Christ, I could make some sort of an automated system where using these things full of water and lava and a bunch of buckets, I guess I would just need four buckets. I could probably make some sort of a system where the buckets would get auto-filled and pushed around and stuff. Uh, this thing's supposed to be full of water, as it says in the description up there, but it it's not. Oh, there we go. Just a visual bug, okay. Yeah, so this thing can automatically fill up buckets, and it can push those buckets to the things that are next to it. You can configure it to do that. Ah, so I could do that, but like... How much obsidian do I really need? Is it worth it? Oh, I'm so glad to have that done with. I had to make like two trips down to get more lava. I finally have enough non-conductive tiny plates. Okay. Let's make the blast furnace. 28. Now I'm pretty sure the blast furnace is just the same as the coke oven in terms of how to construct it. I have a vague feeling that you're supposed to put, like, a hopper on top, too, but that might be the improved one. And even if I have to do that, that's no problem. I'm kind of just working off a of memory here. I could make the engineer's manual, and it'll give you a really good guide on how to construct all these multi-block structures from immersive engineering. But I think I remember most of them. Most of the basics. Yeah, there we go. Crude blast furnace. All right, so let's start making some steel. Yeah, so this thing's all plugged up with creosote oil. Um, let's actually fix that right now. Let's put this thing back to work. There we go. Just hope that oil doesn't disappear. So, 
to make steel, we just put cold coke in here. And then steel up top. And it's that simple. Now the unfortunate thing is that as you can see, it's very, very slow. It's very slow. <laughs> I would love to make many, many blast furnaces to make it faster, but that was incredibly expensive and hard to make, so no. You can upgrade this into a not crude blast furnace, reinforced blast brick. Um, but for that, you're going to need 28 steel, so that's not happening for a while. <clears throat> but how much steel do we really need? I don't actually know. Let's take a look at the tool forge. Tool station, Bl block, night slime. Uh, yeah, let's not do night slime. Let's do <laughs> aluminum brass. Oh no, you need night slime. This, these two recipes are just switching which corner the night slime versus the aluminum brass is in. Wait. Oh no. Everyone, I'm so sorry. I can't make the tool forge. Yes, I do need steel. I need dense steel. Which is made in a compressor. It... It takes nine steel plates to make one dense steel? Well, I'm one ninth of my way to one dense plate after I make the compressor. Thankfully, I only need two of these, so that's 18 steel. Oh, Christ. Okay, tool station, easy. This gonna take a while. Aluminum brass, easy. Night slime, I have no clue what that even is. Energetic alloy... I probably need an alloy smelter? The alloy smelter would be incredibly useful. That's gonna allow me to make all sorts of new things. Um... What does this take? Uh, uh, what? Okay, there's got to be some alternative way of making energetic alloy. Because if you need the energetic alloy to make the alloy smelter, you need the smelter to make the energetic alloy, that obviously doesn't work. Um, compressor? No. Induction smelter? There's no way I can afford that. The arc furnace? Absolutely no way. So I think either the induction smelter has a cheap recipe, which I doubt, or somehow you can actually make it in the Tinker Smeltery. I've just assumed that they're disabling everything in the Tinker Smeltery, all the all the alloys, like this. But maybe it's possible. Let's take a look at the induction smelter. Titanium. I don't think that's happening. Okay, maybe you maybe you can make that. But Manalum? I Ah Christ. Okay, okay, change goals. Instead of focusing on making tools. God, those tools are so much further away than I think. Let's make the water wheel. I'm pretty certain we can do that. That was my old goal a while ago. So let's see. Well, uh, what did I make? I remember I finished a part of it. What did I finish? Right, so we have the kinetic dynamo. Cool. Water... Oh, space. Water, space wheel. Right, so we just need one steel ingot. A single steel ingot surrounded by the water wheel segments to make a water wheel. So that we can absolutely do. Yeah, so let's get... Let's. That, that's my new goal, <laughs> is... Getting this up and going, getting some power generation, some passive power generation that doesn't require any sort of uh, any sort of fuel source like coal or anything, and also a little bit of a battery bank, so I actually have a buffer of power. So I need a bunch of these. Okay, let me get a bunch of treated wood planks up and going using that creosote oil. Okay, that took a long time, but I think I have everything ready. A lot of things ready to craft. So, I need 12 water wheel segments. Done. With those, I'm going to make three water wheels. You can attach up to three water wheels to one kinetic dynamo. 
so the most efficient is three. Speaking of which, let's grab that dynamo. And I'm going to store it. Um, you don't have to use a battery of any sort. It's not necessary, but it does give you a bit of a buffer so that if you temporarily use a machine that uses more power than your your throughput, it gives you a bit of a buffer to work with. Um, I'll just get one for now. That's fine. I can make more, but no need. I'm going to need some wire connectors. Let's get eight of those. I'm going to need some wire relays. Let's get mm, 16 of those. I'm going to need some actual wire to go between the connectors and stuff. I can't even fit that. <laughs> I've got too much stuff on me. There we go. All good. And, oh, right, that's just where I put the wires. And I think that's, yeah, that's everything we need. Oh, I do need some more buckets of water. All right, I uh, had to take a little diversion and do a couple other things because of a reason that I'll explain in just a little bit. But anyway, back to what I was doing. Let's build the water wheel. So I'm going to put the dynamo right here. Let's hook the water wheels up. There we go. Alright, we got a water wheel. Job's done. Uh, no, not quite. Mining fatigue. Oh, it's because my nutrients, my nutrition is terrible because I've been drinking just pure juice, which doesn't actually have any nutrients assigned to it. Well, I'm going to have to improve my diet. That's alright. Alright, let's get this thing spinning. Water wheel needs some water, right? Let me get some height here. So you want the run you want the water that's um you want the water to touch basically every single block of the water wheel. And you want it to be running, and all in the same direction. I'm sure there's a, a perfect ideal setup you could look up online for how to get the most power out of it, but I'll just do a decent setup. There, that should be perfectly fine. And now it's spinning. It's not an amazing setup, I'm sure there's better ones that touch more blocks of running water all in the same direction, but it's fine. And yes, it is just some massive water wheel kind of up in the sky. At least it looks like it's sort of supported in a weird way. <laughs> when I have a real base, if I do something like this, I'll make it look better. Oh yeah, slight problem, huh? The kinetic dynamo is underwater. Oh wow, the mining fatigue really does make it very slow to mine. That's pretty terrible. Alright, so we have the kinetic dynamo. It should be generating power, but it doesn't store power itself. So let's put a battery right here. Now I'm going to put a low voltage wire connector on top of that. And on top of this. So there's two different types of kind of connectors. There's relays and connectors. Connectors are when you want power to come out of something or go into something. So it goes like directly on the device and the relays are just for the mass transfer of power in between. If that makes any sense. So let's connect these two. Use the uh, LV wire coil on that one and then click on this one and now it's connected. And if you look at that, you can see it's building up with power. Uh, now let's get power out of this thing, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. There's two different um, power systems I'm dealing with here. So this is immersive engineering. It generates RF power, which is the most common type of power. Most things use RF. However, the machines that I have from IC2 don't use RF, at least normally. They use EU, energy units. They're in their own separate energy system. So I was just going to use these normal cables that I use to connect those things up there together to connect to IC2, but then I remembered, oh, you can't do that. 
Um, but this does include a mod called Industrial Wires, which actually gives you special wires that allow you to convert between RF and EU. So that was my little diversions, making those. And I've got them built, but to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how to use them. So let's get a couple tin wire connectors and tin wire relays. That's cool, but here's the thing I don't understand is... Can I switch between EU and RF wherever I want, or do I have to do it at the source? In other words, do I have to put the EU wire connector on the battery itself, or can I just like run this as if it was RF until the very end and then just convert over? I don't know. Most likely you have to do it at the source. And just so I don't have to rebuild it, I'm just going to do that. Let's do it at the source. So before I do that, you have to set whether you want um, each side of the battery to be an input or an output. So blue is input and orange is output. So I'm going to be wanting to take power from this side. So let's make it an output. Let's put a tin wire connector on that. And I'm going to put a pole here. I didn't show you me making this, but I made some wooden posts. Pretty simple. Just uh, treated wood and some stone, basically. Makes it look a little bit nicer. Keeps you from having all these connectors just on the floor or something. So tin wire coil. Connect from there to a tin wire relay. These poles are climbable, or the posts are climbable, rather. Just pretty cool. Okay. Let's get one more over here. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. So let's connect from here to this post. Oop. All right, I'm going to rip out this generator. We should not need it. Oh man, this mining fatigue is horrible. So, tin connector. Tin connector. That thing's already full of power, so not going to notice anything. But this thing is empty. Please fill up. That's not filling up. Alright, so I think for some seemingly weird arbitrary reason, you can't go from uh, immersive engineering power... Uh, basically, it seems like you have to go from a battery storage to a battery storage. So I don't think you can go from a immersive engineering battery directly to an IC2 machine. I think you have to go from a immersive engineering battery to an IC2 battery, and then from there to the machines. Don't really know why. I'm not even entirely sure that's the case, but either way, I'm going to make an IC2 battery. The lowest tier is called the Bat Box. It needs three batteries, some tin casing, insulated tin cables, some redstone. My inventory is an absolute mess. <laughs> okay, well, I guess... I don't know. Put it there. That's fine. God, it's hideous. So let's first see if this works at all. It's not filling up. Okay, well, that was a learning experience. I think, again, I'm not 100% sure because I'm not finding really super solid information on this. No documentation as far as I can see, just some posts that I found online. Um, I thought the industrial wires that are made for for IC2, I thought the wires themselves did the conversion, but I don't think they do. I don't think the wires matter at all. I think the thing that actually does the conversion is the rotational to kinetic converter. And I think think that that directly replaces the kinetic dynamo? Question mark? Or maybe goes next to it? I think that's what we need. And that the wires are just basically immersive engineering style wires for IC2, but I don't think they actually do any sort of conversion at all. 
And to make one of these converters, it's like bronze and iron and iron mechanical components, steel sheet metal and plates and like, I, you know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking screw that. From what I saw online and from what I'm seeing in the flowchart, apparently there's a bit of a magic block. The uh, power cube? No, power uh, energy, energy cube. So there's the basic energy cube from mechanism. And apparently if you make this, it's it just can take in RF from one side and just output EU to the other side. It doesn't care. So if I make this, I have a bit of a magical energy cube that can just do whatever the hell I want with, which sounds pretty nice. It's not the cheapest thing, but... Like some gold cable, that wouldn't be hard. Some RE batteries, I've already made those. Easy. Hardest thing is the machine casing, which is... Just the sturdy casing would be the hardest part, but I think I have, uh, yeah, I've got a leftover sturdy casing when I made two that one time. I knew I would need it. So I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that next time, because for now, it's pretty late at night and I kind of need to go to sleep. Man. Modded Minecraft, especially in an expert pack, is always throwing curveballs at you, huh? What a mess. It's alright, though. I'll never make that mistake again. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to craft up that thing and put the last piece of our water wheel energy system into place, and then I shouldn't need to use any sort of coal to power our machines.